Good morning. It is time to skip the BS. It's time for Undisputed. It's time to talk Lakers on the rise and Doc's box falling again to Memphis at home. And Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, joke or legit? That's debatable. LeVar Ball saying he has no regrets about his involvement in his son's careers. That's also somewhat debatable. And are the Texans now the best team in Texas? You know where that's going to go. But first up, let us talk about the team that traded Stephon Diggs to the Texans. The athletic reports that the Bills were just, quote unquote, worn out with Stephon Diggs' behavior. Finally decided he was just more trouble than he's worth. Yet soon after Diggs was traded to Houston, the Bills' Super Bowl odds dropped fairly significantly, while the Texans' odds rose fairly significantly. So, Keyshawn Johnson, good morning to you, What's sir. What's happening, Skippy? Here we go. Will the Bills ultimately look back at trading Stephon Diggs as a big mistake? No, I don't think they'll look back at it as a big mistake at all. Um, because he's a talent that the Texans will benefit from. Okay, the Buffalo Bills didn't benefit from his talent. <laughs> okay, that's one way to look at it. Okay, yeah. they, they only went so far. So you think he'll be a better fit in Houston than he was Way in Buffalo? Way better fit okay. in Houston. He's happy in Houston. He was not happy in Buffalo. And why do you think that was? Well, because when you are a situation and, and everything is built around your quarterback that isn't getting the same criticism and the same okay. vitriol yep. as That's you fair. may as a player. That's you fair. look at that and you say, and this is ridiculous. You know, they, yep. they're making it seem as though everything that's gone on wrong in Buffalo is Stephon Diggs' problem. Okay. Not Josh Allen's problem. They boost Josh Allen up to a whole nother level. Who, who's they? Fans and media? Fans and, and media. Yeah. They, that, that's what they do. Not, not executives, not front office, no, not, not coaches. Front, not necessarily yeah. coaches okay. in front office, but when you are in a situation like Stefan Diggs, where you out there trying to do your best, trying to do everything, and all of a sudden, things aren't going the way it's supposed to, the first thing the camera points to is you, because you may have an outburst, and now you become a problem, okay? Teams don't trade for you with high draft compensation if they deem you a problem. Yeah, his welcome was worn out in Buffalo because he and the quarterback didn't see eye to eye. They did because not. Because he could see what the quarterback was doing wrong. The fans and the media can't see what the quarterback is doing wrong. They don't know. They just think he's pouting because he wants the football put in his hands. Clearly, when you look at his numbers over the time, the four years that he's been there, Josh Allen has been an exceptional quarterback since having Stefan Diggs in the lineup. And prior to that, it was a question mark on whether or not they should have drafted Josh Allen. So it goes hand in hand. Okay, when I say they're not going to miss him, you can get production out of uh, guys. You can get the production out of a bunch of guys. You just throw the ball to one or two or three guys. They're not going to be able to do the things that Stefan Diggs mm -hmm. does, though, out on the football field. Yep. That's just not going to happen. I mean, certain guys are one-on-ones, and he's a one of one in terms of his ability to get up, get up the field, his ability to catch the football, his ability to break tackles, score touchdowns. You go and you look at his numbers in the four years in receptions, he was number one in the league over that four-year span. In yards, he was four, over 5,000 yards, and he was fourth tied in touchdowns with 37. That's a lot of production in those four years. Every single year, they would go to the playoffs, and for whatever reason, he didn't get the opportunities, whether he was getting open, the quarterback was looking for him, or they were calling the right plays to get him the football. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in that room. But from the outside looking at this situation, it was going to blow up eventually. It just was. Yep. And then like yesterday, prior to them trading him, he responded to a fan, or, or two days ago, he responds to a fan that says that Josh Allen, you know, it basically Josh Allen's career is not hinged on Stephon Diggs. It's basically Stephon Diggs, I'm paraphrasing, said, okay, are you sure? Are you sure about are you that? Sure? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. And in the end, he was okay. shipped off to that was a better it. place. Maybe that was the final nail. Better place, know. better yeah. roster, yeah. better, better, in my opinion, better coach, you know, all of those things. Could be better quarterback, could be. C.J. Stroud, I mean, 
C.J. Stroud right there, even though he's a rookie, he's got to do it over a longer period of time. But his rookie year was something to be remembered. I cannot disagree with that conclusion. But I am not going to condemn the Buffalo Bills for trading Stephon because I do believe they finally hit the point of no return. And when that happens within an organization, and I do think they have a strong organization there. I think Brandon Bean is very good at what he does because yeah. he built a very good football team. It hinges on how far can the quarterback take them mm -hmm. ultimately, and it hinges on a Josh Allen who I, I've never been the biggest believer in Josh. I did like the way he played down the stretch last year, and ironically, Stefan was not that involved in the offense over the last, where did they go? They came out of their bye, and they won five straight, six straight with the wild card. And they played Kansas City tough. They, they played them fairly close in the playoff game at home. It was at home, and they lost at home to the eventual Super Bowl champion. But the point is, if I look at Stefan's numbers down the stretch, that they wiped out my Dallas Cowboys, obviously 31 to 10. He, he had 48 yards in that game, but he had... 24 yards against Kansas City, Chargers 24, New England 26 yards. So he, he, he was falling out of the offense at that point, in part because he and the quarterback were just not on the same page anymore. And that's Josh Allen's decision not to throw him the football as much. Remember also, they switched coordinators. They did. And they switched styles. In midstream. Mid midstream. They did. Yep. All of a sudden, when they switched the coordinators, yep. His production completely And, and they, went, they went back to running the ball quite a bit more. Okay, I give you all that. All right. We, we did this on the fly yesterday, and then I looked harder at Stefan's career. All right. He is very good, and, and I'm, I'm buying this point that you made. This may be that seminal move, that flashpoint moment for the Houston Texans where they look back at it and say, well, the Stefan trade – was the catalyst for us winning a Super Bowl. They, they could. If, if they win a Super Bowl in the next, I don't know, couple, three years, you'd look back at this as the turning point moment in their history, right? And Even the, though, the crazy thing about it is they could have got out of the AFC last year. Well, they could have. They could have gotten out okay. of there. All right. Well, you, they had you a like young, them. They you, had a young quarterback. You, you already said that you like them now going into next year even more than you like Baltimore. Yeah. Which I can't, I, yeah. I just can't take CJ the odds over maker, You do understand Lamar. the odds maker... Have them flipped. Kansas City, Baltimore, Texas. Mm -hmm. I flipped it to you Kansas City, did. Houston, yeah. Baltimore. I mean, you got Houston one notch below the Kansas City. defending champs. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the odds maker, the betting people say they're third in the conference. Yeah. I say second. Okay. Same to me. All right. But my point about Baltimore is when you had Derrick Henry, that was a huge move for him. But they lost a lot. They, a lot. Actually, they lost a lot. They lost three offensive linemen. They lost Patrick Queen. They lost, uh, well, Jadavion Clowney and Geno Stone and Gus Edwards. They lost a whole lot. OBJ. Yeah, yeah I mean, and OBJ's just, not going back. That's you right. Know. Okay? All right. I got you. Now, back to how good is Stephon Diggs? Is, really good. Is he top of the top? Is he top yeah. echelon? Oh, yeah. Top okay. five receiver in the league. Okay. I can't put him with Tyreek, and I can't put him with Devontae Adams. And look at what they brought trade-wise. When finally Kansas City said we can't pay Tyreek what he wants and they ship him to Miami, look what they got back. They got a first, a second, two-fourths, and a six for Tyreek, and then Miami had to pay Tyreek. But you, right? can't, you can't make your assumption based on a trade that he's not at that level just because at that time a deal was struck with a team to get more compensation. You can't, you, you, yeah, but you I'm can't, just showing you on the open market, Miami jumped with both feet into that deal. Yeah, because Miami was looking for something. They was looking for electricity yep. at a certain speed. They felt we want a track team. Okay. This is what we All want. Right. And they got one. Devontae to the Raiders. That was for a first and a second. Mm -hmm. well, that's a lot, but he's worth every last penny of that. And whatever you had to pay him, he's worth every red cent of that. Both of those guys, Tyreek and Devontae. Mm -hmm. I think they're on a plateau slightly above Stefan. I'm not that, sure that Stefan. May, that yeah. may be the case. He's a top five yeah. receiver. Though. Okay. So Stefan shockingly gets only back for them a second round pick, not this draft, which I still can't believe. If it were in this draft, I'd say, well, okay, you, you got me. Because they, they need to get healthy again fast. You know, they, they need to restock the cupboard fast. But, that, but it's next year. It's 25 draft. But that, you got to remember Brandon Bean, who I know extremely yep. well. He's, he may package that pick up 
and, and go in the draft well, this year better. and do something. He may take that 25 second round pick, put it with something, and because he's known to do that. Yeah. Now, when you talk about trading, you got to go back to looking at when they acquired him from Minnesota. They gave up a lot to get him from Minnesota. Yeah. Because they saw him as a certain they player. That, right. it, and that's just what it is. But when you are a depreciating asset to a team that basically says, we, we want to get rid of him, what do you want to do? And somebody says, we'll give you a two. Because that, that's all that the market would bear. That, that was well, it. it. With that conversation, when, yeah. when, when, when they know you don't want somebody, yeah. they, they, you, you're, not gonna get, you're not going to get what you yeah. should get. All right, so now let's look at Stefan in the postseason. Let's look at what's happened to him. He's played 14 postseason games, and his teams are 7-7. Seven and seven. Well, obviously, it's a dependent position that you played at the highest yeah. level, so you, you can't put it all on him or even half of it on him, but he participated in seven wins and seven losses. He's averaged 65 yards a game in the postseason, which is...